Hi everyone, welcome to uh, SIGGRAPH 2016. If you're around the bike on move, we're going to give a demonstration of some of the new things we have going on this year. So, we'll start in about 30 seconds. So if you're near the booth, please uh, come on over and have a look at the new stuff we've got going on for 2016. Alright, thanks. Uh, welcome to the Vicon booth, SIGGRAPH 2016. Uh, my name is Derek Potter and I'm uh, the product manager here, along with the rest of the Vicon team. And I'd like to show you some of the new stuff we have going on uh, this year. Uh, so, two big developments for us, and the first one's hardware and the second one's software. So, I'd like to start by pointing out, uh, just over a year ago we released our new line of Vantage cameras, and you can see those right up at the top. And the Vantage cameras, the larger ones, uh, come in 5, 8, and 16 megapixels. Uh, but more importantly for this year, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we released our new uh, Vero cameras. Vero cameras, you can see one right here. Uh, Vero cameras are our small footprint camera. So they're uh, a small size, but big resolution. 2.2 megapixels. Uh, they have inherited all the kind of onboard smart sensing that our Vantage cameras have, so they're kind of the small brother to Vantage. Another thing that's really great that I'd point out about our new Vantage camera, or new Vero cameras rather, is they have a very wide field of view. These have an 86 degree field of view. Uh, that's really, really valuable in spaces such as this. So we can see uh, we've got Becca Pruitt helping us out. Uh, actress, model, and mocap veteran helps us out all the time. Uh, behind Becca, you can see we've got two Vero cameras that are really quite close. They're you know a meter, meter and a half away. Uh, but those are still really useful because it's such a wide field of view. We can capture a lot of Becca even even up close. So in small spaces like this, really really big advantage. Uh, just above the Vero, you can see this camera without a strobe, and that's the view camera. So the view camera is our uh, fully synchronized 1080p video solution. And that's new this year as well. So that's our hardware. Uh, but the other thing that I, I was really keen to show you is something we're calling Project Katana. Project Katana is what you see in the background. So Vicon, like, uh, like all technology companies, goes through periods of research in the background, and then we bring those uh, forward into features into new software. We've had a, a particularly long and fruitful two-year research project going on, uh, and that's allowed us to start bringing forward some, some new innovative features that we're really excited to show you. Uh, within the entertainment space, which is one of the most important spaces for us at Bicon, uh, we talk to our customers a lot, trying to find out you know, what's important to them. And what we recognize at Bicon is, is our mocap portion of entertainment is, is part of a, a bigger workflow. And that workflow starts with the sort of physical side of things, of markering subjects up. And where it ends on the other side is out in another package, an animation package. What we control is that space in the middle. So if you call that A and C, we, we control B. And when we talk to our customers, one of the things they tell us is really important, especially these days, is about how quickly and how efficiently they can get through that mocap portion. And the mocap portion is really kind of five, six, or seven different major things that happen during that, 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 that workflow. So what we're trying to do with Project Katana is we're trying to make improvements, particularly in speed and efficiency, at each one of those major points. Anytime we go to develop something new, so this is an entirely new platform for us, uh, we always start with a, a goal statement that help us, helps us focus on what's important, what we're trying to do. And the goal statement for Project Katana is 
uh, final quality skeletal data by day's end. And each part of that is supposed to speak to something. So high quality, obviously we're, we're always trying to produce the highest quality possible with Vicar. Uh, skeletal data, this talks about our shift from dots, which is classically what we think of with vocab, over to what people are telling us is important, which is skeletal data. And finally, by day's end, really talks about doing things more quickly. So with that as the premise, uh, let me show you about five different new uh, technology previews, new feature work that, that we've got in Project Katana. So the first thing I'd point out is if we just look at Project Katana, the first thing that we've tried to do is create a really clean, uh, really simple, but powerful interface. So Juan will click around in some of these different functional areas, and what you can see is that we've tried to give you access to all the major things you need during your shoot, but when you're not using those, and he clicks back in the workspace, really the focus is about providing you a nice, big, clean uh, work area to get maximum visualization of what's going on during your shoot. So that's the first thing. Uh, the next thing we always have to do, so now if we want to track our subject, if we want to track Becca, the first thing we have to do is, is calibrate our subject. And the current process uh, takes probably four, five, six minutes, and that's going to involve capturing data of our subject going through motions, moving over into post, loading up a file, reconstructing, labeling, and calibrating our subject. So everything we're focusing on right now is about moving things into live. So we'll get Juan to create a new subject for us, and we're gonna show you our demonstration of live subject calibration. So if we ask Becca to go into a T-pose, we give the system about a second, it just starts labeling right away. So uh, we do automatic recognition and labeling of the subject. And this is just kind of a rough and quick uh, subject calibration off a single frame. Once Juan's happy with that, he's going to accept that. But what you see up in the corner is the system telling us, hey, by the way, I'm still doing a subject calibration. So what we're doing in live is the subject is watching everything that, that, that uh, the system is watching everything the subject's doing and collecting frames. We'll get Owen to take uh, Becca through a range of motion now. And as this is happening in live, uh, all the live frames as Becca's moving are getting pushed over to our calibration process, and the system is assessing frame by frame whether it's getting new information, better information, how far is the elbow moved, how are those markers moving. And frame by frame is doing an assessment, and it's, it's creating uh, a calibration as it goes, but it's all done in live. So we'll go through all the different movements of the normal range of motion. And again, our real focus here is saving time and doing everything in live mode. And once Owen's satisfied that we've got uh, a, good, a good bit of movement from Becca, we'll accept that calibration. And again, unlike how things are currently, there's no, you know, there's no progress bar, there's no, it's done. That all happened in live, we built it up. Now, we've seen two processes out of that calibration. We saw the automatic T-pose label, and then we saw the live subject calibration. There's actually three processes going on during that, that workflow, and we would normally, by default, see a different view, but we've hit it just for uh, I don't know, show purposes to have a bit of a reveal. So I'll get Juan to move over to skin mode, and what you're going to see is the new Vicon avatar. And this is going to be our default view of, of what you look at. And this mesh uh, inside Katana was also scaled and solved as part of the same process. So all of those processes happen together. So you know what's important about this? Well, if you hear at the start of my presentation, I said you know the goal statement for Project Katana is uh, shoot quality skeletal data by day's end. And this is really going to start talking about the skeletal side of things. So. Again, what we know is that uh, the mocap portion of an animation workflow is just a middle portion, and eventually it's going to end in an animated character. What we really wanted to do was give animators a view uh, that's closer to what they are used to and closer to what the end product is. We also wanted something to look cool, and I really like uh, how this new avatar looks. But really, the main purpose of this is a functional purpose. It's about easy visual identification of data issues as you're capturing. So if Becca goes more back into a T-pose, and Juan zooms in for us a little bit, we can see some of the functional things about this. We can see uh, circles around the joint lines, we can see long lines going down the limbs. And if we look at the head section, we can see an indication of a sort of view, eye level plus a center, uh, center view. 
The long lines are a good example of how we're trying to work functionality into the skeleton. If we imagine something happens like a marker flip, uh, and you end up getting the two wrist markers flipped, long lines and a, and a good uh, skeletal representation like this, it's very apparent immediately that something's gone wrong. Now right now we're getting really good tracking because we've just calibrated, that's super. But what if Juan does notice something that's a problem? To investigate further, he can go into x-ray mode. So we'll get him to do that. And in x-ray mode, we're going to peer through the skeleton, through the mesh, and we're going to see all the stuff that's driving that mesh. And that's a good example of you know, where we can do further investigation. Now we'll get Becca to cross her arms a little bit, and we'll show you one more thing. Again, in this kind of uh, concept of, of you know really quick, easy visual representations that draw your uh, draw your eyes to things that are potential issues, the system knows now that there are markers that it should be seen, but it knows it doesn't see them. And even though it's continuing to to, to label and solve quite well, uh, this is our, our little indicator showing you, hey, this might be what's going wrong. So there's another thing that's going to help us. Okay, and now we'll come out of that. So that's, a, that's another new feature. The next one I want to show is we'll get Juan to move over to our video camera, our view camera. And we'll zoom in and we can see, uh, we can see Becca there. Now again, so we've got the mesh, we've got all the things driving the mesh, but if we want a further indicator, if we want to bring the, the, the subject in real towards the mocap data, we can ask Juan to go into 3D overlay mode. Because as a part of the same calibration, we calibrated the video camera as well. And if we zoom in on this, this gives us a really good idea. Now, for instance, here's the thing we can point out. Uh, the hip fit for Becca isn't as good as it could be, and we can see that it's really apparent with the, the video. Uh, so we're not going to correct it now, but again, it's just this place where, where we can tweak and get the best quality fit that, 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 that's possible. So now we'll go back to 3D mode. The next feature I'll point out for you is related to system uptime. Another thing that's really important for having an effective or efficient or time-saving workflow from the start of OCAP to the end is uptime while you're capturing. Now, what are things that can affect uptime? What can hold you back? Well, there's two things that I would point out that are, are really uh, common things that affect uptime. One of them is the subject calibration not being as good as it could be, and there's really easy examples of how that happens. Uh, the, your, your, your actor might have to move their, move their uh, markers a little bit because they've got an itch. They might go away to lunch, take their suit off, put it back on. The way we can recover that now is the same way we did the initial calibration. So if our subject were to come back after lunch and the fit isn't quite good, we just kick the system into live calibration mode and it'll update from frames as soon as it starts seeing the subject. Now we've already demonstrated that, so we won't do that one. But let's talk about another one. During my, uh, during my capture, what if one of my cameras gets bumped, or what if I actually decide, you know what, I really need to move that camera. If one puts that into overlay mode, now that I've moved it, we can see that the dots have moved away from my subject, so yeah, this is not, this is not providing good data anymore. So what the process would be currently, again, would be stop the shoot, stop the capture, get our subject hidden somewhere so we can't see it, go find the calibration one, do another calibration, then get the subject in again. So instead what we've done is we've moved camera healing into live as well. So we'll get Juan to go ahead and say, recalibrate that camera, and we'll ask Becca to move around, and we're going to recover that just from information from what's ever in the volume. In this case, it just happens to be one subject. We just have to capture a few frames, we stop, and if Juan does the overlay mode, so we got overlay on, we can see we were, we've recovered that camera. Now that works for one camera, multiple cameras, in fact, it works for all cameras if you want it. Uh, but this is another example of how we're going to save time, keeping the system up time very high. Now the last thing I'd like to show you, and I, I think this is really cool as well, once you do get through capture, and you've done it faster, and you've been able to assess the data uh, as you've been going, and you're fairly confident, you're still going to take that data into offline. And currently, the process would be go offline, load up the trial, re-reconstruct it, re-label it, re-solve it, and then drag back through it. And if anyone is, is used to doing mocap, they'll know particularly if you've got a, a large shoot, if you've got, say, 
four, five, six subjects, and you've got like a five minute capture, the time it takes to load that, reprocess it, relabel it, is fairly substantial. And whether it's you and your team wanting to do a quick assessment of how things are, or whether you've got someone behind your shoulder that's, that you're paying, you know, that is paying you to do this, uh, this mocap, there's a lot of pressure to, I need to see that right away. So we'll get Juan to do uh, just a 30 second capture or something like that. We'll get Becca moving around. So what we've ended up doing now is we're capturing everything in live uh, directly to disk. And that has a, a huge time saving effect. So we get Juan to stop that. Juan's going to open up um, Katana offline. And now, one will drag the file in that we just captured that was written in real time with reconstructions, with labeling, with the solving. And you'll probably have to drag our uh, mesh file in as well. And the file loads. Uh, but the difference in this case. And we'll get one to play the file. So you still have to load the file, but everything's there. So we captured everything in real time. There's no re-reconstructing, re-labeling. It's all there. So you can immediately play that back. So again, rather than taking six minutes, uh, it takes about 10 seconds. Uh, anyway, so uh, hopefully I've shown you a bunch of things here. So we've seen a new simplified uh, interface, live subject calibration with automatic recognition of the subject, uh, video overlay that lets you assess the quality further, the mesh, which has some functional aspects we think are really cool. We've seen live camera recovery. Uh, we've also seen live writing to disk. So again, hopefully that shows you what I was, I was trying to pitch, which is every step along the path, we're trying to save you time and make the process from, from the start to the finish a lot faster. Now that being said, the other thing we're really excited about is uh, Project Katana, we're calling it Project, because it's still a work in progress. And we've actually got about another four major uh, research components uh, that are being pushed over to Katana. So there's not this, these features, there's four other things in the final product that are, again, going to address time issues as you go through the workflow. So hopefully that gives you a good flavor of, of you know, what we're doing at Vicon. Uh, if you want to have a closer look, if you want to come see something, uh, if we have any questions on Facebook, hi Facebook, uh, please feel free to type them in on Facebook, or if you're here physically, please feel free to come up and have a closer look or ask our subject to do something. We'd be uh, happy to see you. Thank you very much.